right, so this is Jared with Zeitgeist Maryland Chapter. I'm here with Burton C. Bell of Fear Factory. Hey, Jared. Nice to see you, man. Nice to see you. We are at Sonar in Baltimore for the Fear Factory concert. I should talk to Burton a little bit and the other Fear Factory guys about their involvement with Zeitgeist and what their thoughts are. So, Burton, pleasure to meet you, man. Jared, pleasure. Appreciate your time. Well, I wouldn't say I'm uh, involved with it. I'm just uh, a fan of it. When did you first hear about the film? When did you, what turned you on to it? Uh, a friend of mine did. Uh, we always talk about the same sort of concepts and same sort of ideas. And uh, he was the one who said, man, this is up your alley. You should check this out. It was probably early 2008, maybe late 2007. Back in the beginning. When I, I, I saw it on YouTube, you know, I, I, just, I just saw it on, immediately went to the website and I bought the two DVDs. I bought the first DVD and then I bought the addendum. We, we were talking earlier about the audio clip from 9-11 and the song Controlled Demolition. I'm wondering if you remember where you were when you first heard about the towers being attacked, what your thoughts were then and what your thoughts are now if you if you have a perspective on the, on the attack. I was in L.A. at my girlfriend's place. Her father was living, still living in New York, and we got the call. It was like, you got to turn the TV on. It was right after the first one hit, and we turned it on, and five minutes later, the second one went down, and uh, it was just unbelievable. You know, I didn't know what to think. Yeah. Uh, I just had to turn the volume down after a while. I was like, uh, no one knows really what's going on. And I was just like, I just watched, just watching the damage happen. Yeah. In the in the album Obsolete, which is what where I started with Fear Factory, one of my favorite albums of all time. Ninety-eight. Yep, ninety-eight. It's part of the lyrics are, "Man is obsolete, erased, extinct." How do you see that extinction coming about? Pretty much most of the Fear Factory uh, records and concepts are forward thinking, meaning that they are set in a futuristic tense. I do come see a time where, uh, where apathy of man will just become so, they'll just let machines just take care of everything. And, you know, that's, you know, machines were meant, technology and machines were created to make life easier, but in some ways it can make it so easy that you know, it can take over. Um, man becoming obsolete, it's, it's, it's a very possibility. You know, we, we make ourselves extinct through technology, uh, war, uh, destruction. Uh, we, can, we can be our own demise, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Uh, so Fear Factory as a band seems to speak most, most simply and most clearly about uh, the methods that are used to control the, method, the masses. Uh, trying to trying to suppress us by fear. How do you see us rising above that, or getting outside of that bubble to where to where that's no longer such a controlling mechanism? Education, knowledge is power. Agreed. And if you understand what the if you understand what your enemy is, there's no need to fear it. There's, there's a way to combat it. Yeah, I uh, love to that. To take it on and take it head on and beat it at its own game. What are you afraid of? I'm just afraid that. Ignorance will just take full control of this, the population. You know, when it comes to mob rules in its entirety, then we're all doomed. Yeah. Is being replaced by a robot a bad thing, a good thing, or a combination of both? That's what you were doing <laughs> at the time. You know, a big, you know, a fine example is uh, Detroit, uh, the auto industry, using robots. You know, in the assembly lines. Yeah, they still have. They, they uh, liquefied their work, uh, human workforce down, you know, probably you know, about 80 percent. So there's still humans, you know, mat, you know, controlling the robotics, robotics of the assembly line. But there's some, a lot of it is mostly robotics. Um, a lot of the assembly lines uh, do not have humans there. You know, but if you, if that's what your education has led you to, to be an assembly line. Meant for more, you can create jobs for humans that you know can advance our world further. How do you think uh, artists and musicians can influence influence social activism? And do you see Fear Factory as an outlet for promoting a social message? In some ways, you know, I, um, artists have a voice through the media that they're part of. You know, either they're in print or they're you know, writers or the musicians. Uh, painters or what have you, they have a, a following. And 
just takes a few people, especially today, with you know, the social the social media of the internet, just takes a few people that you know who are close who can spread the word. And it, spread, it really spreads like wildfire. It takes the right artist, um, socially conscious, um, who, you know, for, for instance, for me, I decided a long time ago, I have this opportunity to say something. I'm I'm not gonna waste anything else. You know, make them think, and uh, that's that's all I've ever wanted to do because that's what my, the the artists and musicians that I follow did for me. Yeah. So I'm you know, just pushing it forward. Yeah, and I think that that rings so true with today's youth and society, where everybody is looking for somebody else to tell them what to think. Uh, for better or worse, we're watching our TVs. We're on the internet. You know, trying to trying to tell me what to buy next, what to think, how to be able to win. So with your using your voice on a, on a little bit broader scale, I'd, I'd love that you're sending a message out there, and I really appreciate that. Wow, it's it's, it's my pleasure to do it because I love what I do. You know, yeah. I love being part of Fear Factory. I love being able to you know be on the road. I think if people will really open their minds and you know try reading, you know, it's it's it's, it's it's not rocket science to read. You know? And it's not it's, so bad. It's, it's a little story. Yeah, it's it's a little story, it. you know, but it's, a, it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's like a fable. It's all metaphorical. And it's like you just think, you know, use your mind and think and, you know, take it even further. So what can we expect to see from Fear Factory in the future? We got a record coming out June 5th called The Industrialist. <laughs> Industrialist, check it out. It's, it's a futuristic story again. Man vs. Machine, but The Industrialist is an automaton. The story that is written inside of it is from the eyes of the automaton. It's from the machine perspective this time. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, it's uh, interesting. Uh, there's a special edition that's going to come out that has the story. That regular version won't have the story. The touring. You know, we got the shock shockwave tour coming in July with Boy Vibe and other bands like Misery Index and about 20 other bands. And the rest of this year. Hey, did you have a? A message that you would like to send to the Zeitgeist movement. Yes, uh, keep doing what you're doing. You, know, you educated me, and because uh, you know a like-minded friend who uh, knew that I would enjoy it and understand it, sent it my way. I sent it to others that way, and uh, you know just keep what you're doing and keep pushing the thought, keep pushing those minds open. All right, man. Well, Burton C. Bell, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, We Jared. as a movement appreciate it. The Industrialist, June 5th, Fear Factory. Check it out. Peace.